Muli po magandang hapon sa ating lahat. Ito po muli ang inyong tutor para sa araw na ito at sa oras na ito. Ang, ang magiging tutor nyo sa Practical Research 2 para sa week 1 ng third quarter. Ako po muli si uh, Tutor Ronald. At ang ating pong tatalakayin para sa week 1 ng third quarter ay tungkol sa characteristics, strengths, weaknesses, and kinds of quantitative research. Muli po ang practical research ay tungkol sa quantitative research. At para sa ating objective, uh, ang ating pong mga sujante or learners, learners should be able to describe characteristics, strengths, weaknesses, and kinds of quantitative research. Yan po ang uh, ating objective na kinuha sa ating most essential learning competencies guide. Okay, before... Before we describe or go to the characteristics and weaknesses, strengths, and kinds of quantitative research, let's first try to find out uh, and discuss some definitions of quantitative research according to some authors. Okay. Um, according to Baraceros in 2016, quantitative research is a type of research that makes you focus your mind by means of statistics that involve collection and study of numerical data. So, ang focus po ng quantitative research ay uh, numerical data, numbers, no? Numbers, collection and study of numerical data. And these numerical data are uh, analyzed by the researcher by means of statistics. No? By means of statistical treatment and tools. In 2015, Antwi and Hamsa said uh, that uh, quantitative research primarily follows the confirmatory scientific method because its focus is on hypothesis testing and theory testing. So, gaya po ng qualitative research, quantitative research is also uh, uh, follows scientific method because it focuses on hypothesis testing and theory testing. So, tinitest po ang hypothesis sa isang uh, research gaya ng quantitative research, uh, hypothesis and theory. And ayun naman po kay Levy in 2017, quantitative research is characterized by deductive approaches to the research process aimed at Proving, disproving, or lending credence to existing th theories. So, meron pong deductive approaches or um, nga po, scientific uh, methods na pinafollow ang isang uh, researcher ng quantitative research para i-disprove, para i-prove or disprove ang isang teoria. And in addition, Quantitative research, according to Levy, values breadth, statistical descriptions, and general generalizability. Okay. So, ilang po ang ilan sa mga definitions ng quantitative research according sa mga authors ng ilang libro sa quantitative research. 
Magandang hapon po sa mga tagapanood natin bago po tayo magpatuloy uh, kay Ma'am Corazon, um, Elsa Vergara, kay Alarma Mark, watching from Nagpayong High School TVL ICT3. Okay. Um, in general, quantitative research is an objective scientific empirical investigation of observable phenomena through the use of computational techniques. Objective po siya dahil meron pong uh, basis. No? Hindi lamang po siya base lang sa opinion ng isang a uh, researcher and uh, meron pong systematic empirical investigation dahil nga po ito ay sumusunod sa scientific method no and uh, deductive uh, approaches to so systematic uh, in systematic empirical investigation din ang isang quantitative research and again, gumagamit po ng mga statistical or computational techniques. And again, quantitative research uses numbers in stating generalization about a given problem or inquiry. Para po makapagbigay na isang generalization or uh, conclusion tungkol sa study, ang kadalasan pong or ang nakabase po ang isang generalization or conclusion ng isang research study kadalasan sa numero or numerical data na nakukuha ng isang quantitative researcher. Okay, so let's continue with the next uh, lesson which is now on the characteristics of quantitative research. So, ano nga ba ang kaibahan ng isang quantitative research sa qualitative research? So, ano po ang mga karakteristiks upang malaman uh, natin na ang isang research ay quantitative research? Ayan, magandang hapon po muli sa ating Facebook uh, watcher at sa YouTube din po na nanonood ng live. Kagaya po ni Morena, Juliano, Salvador, Ruth, Zamora, Kalanday. Medyo mahina po ang ating internet ngayon, kaya hindi ko po na babasa lahat ng ating taga-subaybay. So, ayong kay Baraseros in 2016, Merong standards or criteria of quantitative research. So, meron pong 10 uh, criteria. Meron pong uh, 10 standards or criteria. And sa bawat, sa bawat uh, standards or criteria, meron pong uh, karakteristik ng quantitative research na itinapat. So, ang first standard ay uh, mental survey of reality. So, quantitative research exists in the physical world. No? So, physical world meaning uh, issues sa lipunan ang pinibigyan po ng pansin ng isang quantitative research. Issue sa lupungan, problema sa komunidad. No? So, kung ano po nangyayari sa ating in reality, sa ating uh, mundo o sa ating uh, kapaligiran. Next standard is cost-effect relationship. So, for this standard, Okay. Uh, pasensya na po at naputol po tayo ng saglit. Um, so, sa ngayon po tayo po ay mapapatuloy 
sa ating um, talakayan, sa ating discussion. At kanina, kanina po bago tayo mawala ay uh, aking po binanggit ang mga definition ng quantitative research no ayun po sa iba't ibang um, authors ng libro at mga researchers rin po so nag-uumpisa po tayo bago po tayo maputol ng characteristics of quantitative research at gaya nga po ng sinabi ko kanina um, ayun po kay Baraseros in 2016 Meron pong standards or criteria of quantitative research. So, binigay po dito sa uh, libro ni Barceros ang sampung standards or criteria wherein meron naman pong itinapat na characteristics upang ma-meet itong standards or criteria na ito ng quantitative research. So, again, uh, first standard is mental survey of reality. Ibig sabihin, ang um, quantitative research po ay nag exist in the physical world. Or ibig sabihin, um, ang topic na pinag-aaralan ng, ng isang quantitative researcher ay mga issue sa lipunan, um, mga problema sa komunidad, or... or mga uh, iba pang bagay na meron na maari makapekto sa tao sa ating mundong ginagalawan. So, reality. Kung ano man po ang reality sa ating uh, kasalukuyan. No? Second standard is about the cost-effect relationships. Sa quantitative research, uh, pinag-aaralan din po ang uh, cost and effect relationships ng bagay. So, ang tawag dito ay mga variables, no? Kung ano ang cost-effect relationships ng variables ng quantitative research. Uh, medyo bibilisan ko lang po, no? Baka maputol na naman po tayo. Sayang po ang pagkakataon. Um, Nangyari, medyo mahina, mahina talaga ang ating internet, nawawala. And nakakadagdag pa sa problema ang ulan dito sa amin. Muti nila at nakabalik tayo, sana hindi na tayo mawala. So, balik tayo sa ating discussion about the characteristics of quantitative research. And the third standard or criteria of quantitative research is on the expression of data, data analysis, and findings. And again, basing nga po sa uh, definitions ng research na binigay natin kanina, research uh, findings and data analysis are mostly um, numbers and use um use uh, use statistical take uh, statistical treatments or uh, computational techniques so mga nom uh, numero ang pinag-aaralan or kadalasang uh, pinag-aaralan at siyang pinagbabasihan ng findings at uh, analysis ng data so numbers ang data ng isang quantitative research Para naman po sa research plan, all aspects of a quantitative research are well planned before data collection. Siyempre po, research po yan. Research po yan. So, kailangan uh, lahat, po ng, lahat po ng aspects, no? na lahat po ng proseso ay dapat nakaplano. Uh, even before the data collection. So, meron pong process, procedure na, finafa, na sinusunod uh, ayon po sa plano ng isang quantitative research o gaya po ng isang quantitative research. 
Next standard is behavior toward research aspects or condition. Conditions. Um, usually, sa quantitative research, um, the control or manipulation of research condition is uh, done by the researcher. So, na meron pong control um, at uh, pwede pong ma manipula na isang researcher ang research conditions gaya po ng uh, kung sino po ang gusto niyang target na um, target na participants or respondents sa research kung saan pong lugar you know? so meron pong control ang isang researcher then in terms of obtaining knowledge, again, uh, quantitative research follows scientific method. No? Scientific method. Next, for purpose, the purpose of a quantitative research is to evaluate objectives and examine cause-effect relationships. No? Uh, Kadalasan po ng quantitative research, meron po tayong types of quantitative research. And uh, ang pinaka-common um, na type of quantitative research ay pinag-aaralan ang cost-effect relationship. No? Later, malalapang po natin kung ano po itong mga types or kinds of quantitative research. Data analysis techniques. The techniques... Uh, or the data analysis techniques are mathematical based on methods, no? scientific methods, statistics. Kaya uh, mabuti po at meron po tayong statistics and probability na subject um, kasabay po ng practical research no? dahil ang statistics and probability po na subject ay maaari pong makatulong sa quality, uh, quantitative research, lalo na po sa pag-analyze ng data. Okay, sunod, style of expression. No? Uh, quantitative research is impersonal or objective, no? and it is scientific, no? based on facts, or it's factual, it is systematic. Meron pong process na sinusunod. For sampling technique, kadalasan po ang pinaka or pinakamadalas na ginagamit na sampling technique para po sa uh, participants ng isang quantitative research ay random sampling. Random sampling. So, yun lang po ilan sa mga characteristics ng quantitative research. Siyempre, ang ilan pong mga specific no, na characteristics or quality, qualities of quantitative research ay, again, objective or impersonal, uh, meron pong structured research instruments, meron pong numerical data, and... In addition po, ang quantitative research ay kailangan po na isang uh, ng large sample size. No? Unlike po sa qualitative, pwede ka pong uh, pumili ng ilan lamang na mga uh, respondents o participants sa inyong research. Pero sa quantitative research, mas maigi, mas mainam kung marami ang iyong research participants or respondents. So, kailangan po ng large sample size ng isang quantitative research. And, ang isang quantitative research ay uh, maaari pong ma-replicate or it can be repeated to verify findings in another setting. So, kung meron man pong mga uh, previous research about a certain topic that you are um, inclined to research on or you are interested to research, no? pwede niyo po itong pag-aralan muli or uh, gamitin bilang 
pinakabatayan ng iyong research na gagawin. So, similar, pero sa ibang setting or ang ilang aspects ay iba naman po. No? And, so, ilaman po ilan sa mga characteristics no, ng quantitative research. Next, Uh, strengths and weaknesses of quantitative research. So let's find out the strengths and weaknesses of quantitative research. So we'll be able to describe them as we uh, go along with our research, practical research to subject. You know? So Prieto and others in 2017 gave uh, the strengths and weaknesses of quantitative research. So according to them or uh, in uh, their book, um, one of the strengths of quantitative research is that it has a valid way of concluding results and most reliable design and gives way to a new hypothesis or to disproving it. Valid way of concluding results kasi nga na ang results or conclusions no, ay uh, dumadaan ang data, you know, dumadaan sa analysis, sa masusing uh, analysis gamit ang statistical methods and statistical techniques. Now, meron din pong ginagamit na research design, no, appropriate res research design para sa isang a specific na, na focus or focus of study or topic ng isang quantitative research. And of course, ito pong, mga, ito pong specific na research design ay magbibigay dan upang ma-prove ang hypothesis ng isang research. No? Ma-prove or ma-disprove ang isang hypothesis or sabi natin claim or pinaka main uh, thesis ng isang research no ang isa naman pong weakness uh, isa sa mga weakness ng quantitative research according to Prieto at iba pa uh, it can be time consuming costly and difficult and also because most researchers are non-mathematicians. Well, uh, mainam po kung isang researcher ay mathematician din. No? So, medyo madali para sa kanya. Ngunit, mathematician mo hindi, ang isang quantitative research ay talagang time-consuming. Costly and uh, and costly. Bakit? Kasi nga, kailangan ng large sample size ng isang uh, quantitative research so, nagiging costly siya in a way na uh, kailangan mo ng, for example, uh, mas maraming time, mas maraming resources. Like, if you use a uh, questionnaire as your research tool to gather uh, data, then kailangan mo mas maraming um, number of copies of questionnaire. Or kung interview man yan, kailangan, you know, mahabang yung time no? na gugugulin para sa interview just to get the data that you need. Okay? Enough data. So, time consuming siya at magastos. Pero, do not be do not be discouraged kasi mala, marami naman pong paraan sa in terms of cost, marami pong paraan para po ito mga solusyon. Kung baga, kung meron man pong challenge, of course, we'll find a way to uh, solve. Kung meron problema, we will find a way to solve that problem. Okay, next. Um, Tuloy-tuloy lang po tayo, no? Uh, pasensya na po, hindi ko po nakikita ang mga uh, taga-pakinig at uh, taga-subaybay ng ating itulay. Gusto ko po kayong batiin ng magandang hapon ngay 
uh, general na po kahit hindi ko po na kikita or nababasa yung mga pangalan dahil mahina po ang aking signal. So, ngayon po, uh, second strength of, or another strength of quantitative research is that the bigger number of the sample of a population, the more reliable and valid are the results or generalizations. No? Uh, I remember in my undergraduate study, nung nag-present kami ng thesis namin, undergrad thesis, one of the questions sa uh, oral uh, defense namin ng aming professor was uh, kung ilan ang aming ilan ang aming participants no and then binigay ko yung number and then uh ni recommend ng aking professor na dapat daw mas uh, mas marami pa yung aming uh, kinuhang respondents or participants para magkaroon ng more reliable uh, reliable and valid na results or generalizations. Anyway, uh, pinagbigyan naman po kami kasi hindi naman po masyadong konti lang yung participants namin. Medyo okay-okay lang. Anyway, so um, dahil nga po sa kailangan natin ng mas uh, malak mas malaking or mas reliable na na results or generalizations no dapat uh, meron din po tayong mas malaking number of of the sample of a population and i do hope that you know what's the difference of sample sa population no? so, population yung kabuuan and ikukuha ka lang ng sample uh, sa kabuuan ng population. Next, ano mang po ang isa pang weakness? It requires extensive statistical treatment. Retesting and refinement of the design is needed if there is some clear finding and that entails another investment in time. So, time consuming nga po siya dahil isa po sa nakaka-add ng time ay ang testing and retesting ng yung data no ng data and uh, it requires extensive statistical treatment so hindi lang po isang statistic uh, statistical uh, ano tawag dito statistical tool ang kailangan gamitin or uh, statistical method ang kailangan gamitin at um, kailangan po ang gagawa ng statistical treatment ay isang statistician or mathematician o yung talagang uh, expert po sa uh, bagay na ito statist uh, sa statistics. Next, experiments in quantitative design filter out external factors and if properly designed, the results can be seen as real and unbiased. No? Meron pong tinatawag na experimental research design, no, later, um, i-discuss po natin yan. And these uh, experiments, no, filter out external factors, ibig sabihin na yung mga irrelevant, irrelevant data or irrelevant aspects of the, of the research ay hindi na po siya na isasama no or na filter out na po ng uh, ang ang external factors because of experiments and with this uh, filtering out with these experiments the result can be seen as real and unbiased so objective makatotohanan factual ang uh, results na isang quantitative research Weaknesses po, isa po sa weakness ay uh, quantitative method tends to turn out only proved or unproved results, leaving little room for uncertainty or gray areas. Dahil nga po sa ito ay straight to the point or kailangan lang po i-prove or disprove ang isang hypothesis or ang isang claim. So medyo hindi po na bibigyan ng pansin yung med yung maliliit na bagay na maaari makaapekto ngunit hindi naman po makaapekto sa kabuuan 
ng isang uh, isang uh, research finding. So, yun lamang po ilan sa mga weaknesses and strengths or strengths and weaknesses of uh, quantitative research. Sige, continue na po tayo at uh, tayo po ay nag-overtime na dahil sa internet connection. Kinds of quantitative research. So, according to Mujis or Muhis, Mujis in 2017, there are two major types of quantitative research design. No? Experimental and non-experimental research design. Okay, what is an experimental research design? So, experimental from the word experiments. So, experiments are, or experiment, experiments are used in explanatory research and are based on causal logic or cause and effect logic. This logic looks at uh, identifying causal relationships between variables. So, ito pong research design ang nag-study, nag, uh, nag study upang malaman ang cause-effect relationships ng variables na isang research. For example, A causes X or A causes X under Y circumstance. So, A variable causes X or A variable causes X under Y circumstances. And uh, Mujis in 2004 further stated that experimental method is a test under control condition that is made to demonstrate a known truth or examine the validity of a hypothesis. So, it's a test under controlled conditions. So, controlled po yan ng isang researcher. No? Ang uh, controlled condition ng isang researcher. Alright. Let's continue. Uh, Levy in 2017 categorized, uh, categorized experimental research into three. Pre-experimental design, true experimental design, and quasi-experimental design. And let's uh, discuss each of these. So, ex uh, exp pre-experimental designs are focused on studying a single group that is given the experimental intervention. No? And this group is, uh, group is called experimental group. So, ibig sabihin, sa pre-experimental design, meron lang pong isang grupo ang binibigyan ng pansin. So, parang um, wala pong tinatawag na uh, controlled, controlled group at saka yung untreated group. Kumbaga, wala pong kinocompare. No? Uh, meron lang pong isang grupo na siyang pinatutuunan ng pansin sa isang pre-experimental design. Kung baga, uh, example, pre and post test, no? Pre and post test, i-compare yung result ng pre sa post, uh, post test. So, para walang ganong uh, uh, concept sa pre-experimental design. Next, um, the next category is true experimental design, also called classical experiments. These are based on randomization. Research subjects are randomly assigned to control experimental groups. Because both randomization and control groups are used, true experiments are considered the strongest form of experiments. No? Kaya nga, true experimental design. So, in here, meron pong, unlike po sa pre-experimental na isa lang po yung uh, group, dito po meron pong control and experimental group. And, uh, uh, this uses random uh, sampling. No? The groups, the participants are randomly selected. Okay, randomly selected. And again, this is considered the strongest form of experiments. Next is the quasi-experimental designs which involve taking advantage of natural settings 
or groups and thus subjects are not randomly assigned. Okay. Meron din po itong groups. Uh, uh, experimental and control groups. However, uh, these are not randomly assigned. Kung mga base lang po siya sa ang groups ay pinipili or ang participants ay pinipili based sa, sa, sa setting or sa location no? ng isang research, uh, quantitative research. The next major type of uh, quantitative research design is the non-experimental research. So according to Barraceros in 2016, it is a way of finding out the truths about the subject by describing the collected data about such subject and determining the relationships or connections with one another. Unlike experimental, um, experimental research design, non-experimental research cannot establish cause-effect relationships. No? So, hindi po, pinag, uh, hindi po binibigyan pansin ng isang non-experimental research ang cause-effect relationships ng variables of research. In addition, Levy in 2017 stated that while validity is still a concern in non-experimental research, the concerns are, mo are more about the validity of the measurements rather than the validity of the effects. Kung baga, ang focus lang po niya ay dun sa kung paano uh, kung paano uh, inanalyze or measure na measure ang uh, research data kung valid ba ang ginamit na measurements to come up with the results and findings. Now, non-experimental research also has uh, different types or kinds. One is survey research. So, a survey research is a non-experimental research. It is the most widely used quantitative design in the social sciences. And most com uh, this is commonly used in survey research, with which you are probably familiar, which in uh, include the census, polling on political issues or public opinions, and market research. So, non-experimental po ang survey research. So, yung uh, census, yung polls, uh, like uh, presidential poll, no? public opinions and market research. So, survey research po siya. Again, non-experimental kasi nga po, uh, hindi po siya um, nakafocus sa ef effect. No? Wala pong effect na pinag-aaralan sa isang survey. Kung baga, more on um, the validity of how the data gathered uh, were measured. Kung, uh, kung baga, Ka valid ba yung valid ba ang ginamit na measurement para masabi natin na reliable ang, ang finding or results no gaya po ng for example uh, survey like for example survey ng isang uh, product minsan kasi uh, merong nagko-question ng finding. So, kung question nila, ano bang ginamit ninyong measurement? Paano nyo in-analyze? No? So, non-experimental research ang ginamit sa, ang ginagamit sa isang survey research. Next type of non-experimental research is descriptive or observational study. No? Uh, in this type of non-experimental research, the researcher observes or describes what the subjects report and do not intervene with a treatment. 
So, wala pong ginagamit na statistical treatment no? sa isang descriptive or observational study. Then, the third non-experimental research is a correlational research. It has three types. Bivariate correlational study, prediction study, and multiple regression prediction study. A correlational research according to Prieto, Prieto and others uh, uh, has three types, so one of which is a bivariate correlational study which obtains scores from two variables from each subject and use them to calculate a correlation coefficient. And when we say correlation, it means variables are selected because they are believed to be related. So, bivariate. Bi means two. So, dalawa ang variable sa isang bivariate, bivariate correlational study. Next is, uh, uh, here. here are some examples. Ice cream sales go up. So, that's the first variable if the temperature is high. So, there's a positive correlation. Next example, crime in the community increases. Variable 1 as the number of police personnel decreases. So, variable 2, so there's a negative correlation. Another example is... Increased ice cream sales are not correlated to crime increase in the community. So, there's no correlation or zero correlation. Hindi sila related. No, yung dalawang variables. And then, uh, the third or the second type of correlational research is a prediction study or prediction studies. The correlation coefficient to show how one variable predicts another. For example, the National Achievement Test or the NAT scores in grade 12 are used to predict student scores in college in terms exam. So, prediction study. And then, the third correlational research is the multiple regression prediction studies. These make it possible to combine the variables that can contribute to the overall prediction in an equation that adds together the predictive of each identified variable. Kumbaga, meron pong ibang uh, predictor or meron ibang variable na posibleng maka-apekto, no? maka sa prediction, sa result ng isang prediction study. For example, uh, kanina sa, if we want to predict the uh, college entrance exams of grade 12 students, we will uh, study their scores. However, there's a possible question that uh, GPA lang ba talaga ang sole predictor ng college uh, entrance exam or GPA? So, maaaring meron pang ibang good predictors. So, pwede po yung pag sa isang multiple regression prediction study. Okay? So, yun po ang, uh, again, the experimental and non-experimental uh, research types. Again, these are the two major types of uh, quantitative research. I mean, uh, types of research, design of a quantitative research. Alright, so let's proceed to some uh, learning task. So first learning task, so of course we will try to find out if you have learned If you have learned something in our discussion today, kahit na uh, putol-putol at uh, medyo nawala tayo kanina. 
So, all you have to do is to write yes. So, sa inyong comment, uh, pwede nyo pong i-type in yes if the statement describes the characteristics of a quantitative research. No, if not. So, first, quantitative research can be based on replication. That is, uh, replicating previously conducted study with new populations. I hope meron po tayong sumasagot sa ating uh, FB comments. Unfortunately, hindi ko po nakikita yung mga pangalan. Ganun pa man, let's see kung sino po nakakuha ng tama. Ang tamang sagot po ay yes. No? So, yes po. Uh, characteristic po yan ng isang quantitative research. Again, quantitative research can be replicated. Next, number in quantitative research, a sample needs to be large enough to adequately represent the population. Is it a characteristic? Just type in yes or no. Sige. Ang tama sagot ay yes. Next. Quantitative research includes interview data that may be described in a narrative that points out themes and trends. Did, uh, discuss, did I discuss this earlier? Did I mention about themes and trends in quantitative research as a characteristic? So, no. And the last number, quantitative research values the depth of meaning and uh, people's subjective experiences and their meaning-making processes. So the answer is no. All right. So this time, determine if the statement given below is the strength or weakness of a quantitative research. So pili lang po kayo sa dalawa, uh, strength na ba or weakness. First, it is assumed that the larger the sample is, the more statistically accurate the findings are. Strength or weakness. It is a strength. Okay, next. It is costly. No? Costly ang quantitative research. So, of course, weakness. So, sino nga bang mas um, papayag na strength ang magastos? So, weakness po yan. The most reliable and valid way of concluding results, giving way to a new hypothesis or to disproving it. Is this a strength or weakness? It is a strength, yes. Next. Standardized approaches allow the study to be replicated in different areas and over time with formulation of comparable findings. Which is which? Pili lang po kayo sa dalawa, strength or weakness. And the correct answer is strength. Then the last number. Since there are more respondents, the expenses will be greater in reaching out to these people and reproducing questionnaires. Of course, it is a weakness. All right. So, congratulations sa nakakuha ng tamang sagot sa lahat ng items or numbers. So, what have you learned? So, just, uh, you know, say this with yourself or siguro isulat mo na lang. So, based on the lesson, mental na lang, mental uh, answer na lang, no? Based on the lesson, I have realized that quantitative research is. So, what is quantitative research as uh, one of your uh, realizations from our discussions earlier? So, yan po. Next, sunod po. I, this is what you can do no, to apply what you have learned. Uh, you can do this at home 
You can write your answers in your journal, uh, notebook, paper. All right. So what will you do? What you can? What can you do? Observe your school. Kung malapit kayo sa inyong school, kung nakapunta kayo ngayon sa inyong school, your community or your home. Identify possible problems that is present in your observation and practice solving the problem by filling in the blank. So, meron po mga blank yan actually after the questions. Make it uh, more numerical in nature using the terms frequencies, number of times, and how often. Excuse me. First question is, what is observation? Ano po ang inyong uh, observation sa inyong community or sa inyong bahay, sa inyong skwelahan? And then, what is the problem? What's the problem na nakita po ninyo sa inyong community, sa inyong school? And uh, uh, provi provide three possible solutions to solve the problem. What are the possible results of the three possible solutions? And